Hey there, Internet, and welcome to this brand new review. Do you remember my little medieval review? In that review, we witnessed the heroics of the undead hero Daniel Fortescue. Do you also remember how I told you that our friend Dan would go on to spend the rest of eternity in the Hall of Heroes? Well, that wasn't entirely true. As you can tell from the title of this video, there is a sequel, Medieval 2. So why don't we find out what this game is about? The game itself opens up with a little recap of Dan's fight against the evil sorcerer Sarok. The game promptly jumps ahead 500 years and shows us that Dan is now part of a museum expedition in London. Now that's dignifying. The game wastes even less time to introduce the game's villain. You can tell he's the bad guy because of his laugh. <laughs> This charming guy found pages of Zarok's spellbook and casts one of the spells written in it. The spell summons nasty demons and raises the dead, including our old friend Dan. And he's not the only familiar face we get to meet again. Our spooky friend here is back too. Waking up in the museum, I'm greeted by this friendly ghost, Winston. He gives me a quick rundown of the intro and now it's time to arm up. <laughs> get it? I'm up. I'm so funny. At a first glance, the sequel's gameplay doesn't differ much from the first game, so there isn't much I can tell you about it now. Dan's mumbling is more audible now, though. Oh wait, there is one thing I almost forgot to mention. I can now switch between two weapon slots to make combat a little bit more fluid. And you're seeing right, Dan is packing heat now. Boom headshot! Boom So I make my way through the haunted museum and run into this merchant guy. Hmm, who does he remind me of? Got something that might interest you. <laughs> oh, the Chalice of Souls is back too. I can't wait to collect all of them to get the good ending. And something looks familiar here. But I can't really tell what it is. My journey eventually leads me to the level's boss, a spooky skeleton dinosaur called Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm not kidding, that's what it's actually called. I take down the bonehead and get to meet Winston's boss, the professor. Fortescue, pleased to meet you. I should imagine that you are a little nonplussed as to what exactly is going on, eh? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Well, allow me to introduce myself. Professor Hamilton Kift, magician, inventor, and master of the occult at your service. If you're wondering what you're doing once again walking the earth, it appears that someone has got their hands on the legendary Zarok spellbook. Zarok. Oh, no. Well, people like myself have been searching for that book for centuries. The power within its pages, oh. Well, last year, certain pieces of the book turned up, and this is the result. Total chaos. First, we have to find the extent of the damage, don't we? I myself am imprisoned in this god-awful pit without any power. Top priority is to get this place into suitable shape to start waging a little guerrilla war. <laughs> Has Winston told you about collecting magic? He has. Oh, good, good. Well, uh, off you go then. Uh, wh what the fuck just happened? Well, at least he gives me a sweet pimp cane. Ah, yes, that's right. The professor is replacing the Hall of Heroes as my source of new weapons. In exchange for my soul chalices, he does not only give me an awesome hammer and this lightning weapon, but also rewards me with a Gatling gun. <laughs> who's making fun of me now? The next order of business is to figure out who's behind the recent undead activity. I take a look around the area surrounding the museum and run into some new types of enemies. I even run into these two guys. <coughs> Master, will we please reboot it? Yes. Why is there a spaceship looking aircraft in this game? What's going on? Apparently, these guys are looking for something in a tomb kept in the museum. After some puzzles and fighting, I managed to open the tomb myself and bump into the mummy Kia. Interesting. I'll analyze this and see if I can't debrief our friend over here. Just to clear things up, that close up you just saw, that wasn't me. That was the game. I love it already. 
Good for you, Dan. Seems like you finally got a proper love interest. While the professor is trying to figure out who's behind all this, I take the opportunity to visit a freak show. There are some... fun jumping parts in this level and the bearded ladies here are freaky. But other than that, there is nothing new to see here. Oh, you can pick up some drumsticks here. Seems like someone played Castlevania. It turns out that the name of our main villain is Lord Palethorn, a black magician who wants to collect all the pages of Zarok's spellbook to take over the world. To foil this plan, I first have to travel to the Greenwich Observatory. I fight some sailor zombies here and a really mean birdie steals my hat. Oh, look at that! A new gameplay mechanic, which is also incorporated into puzzles. That's neat. I fight my way through these creepy alien monsters, cool, and manage to get myself a hot air balloon. I coincidentally foil Palethorn's efforts to get his hand on one of the spellbook pages, and now I have to fight his dog and lizard man. Why not? The next part comes out of nowhere. Palethorn is challenging the professor to a boxing match. Don't ask me. I have no clue either. We help the professor to build a Frankenstein-like monster, but he fucks up. I now have to step in and become Dankenstein to defeat Palethorn's Iron Slugger. I may repeat myself, but I have no clue either. I remember that I really sucked at this fight back when I played this game as a kid. And surprise surprise, I still suck at it. I eventually defeat the Iron Fucker, but the professor has some news for me. He located two points of interest, Wolfram Hall and Whitechapel. Since I can't be at two locations at once, he sends out Kia to Whitechapel. Yeah, sure, what could go wrong? It's not like a serial killer was on the loose there back then. Anyhow, I arrive at Wolfram Hall and since I can't get in, I decide to arrest their butler a bit. <laughs> It's time to introduce another new gameplay mechanic. You may saw those green hands following me around throughout the game. Turns out that I can take control over them by putting my head on them. I use this creep ability to let myself into Wolfram Hall and get a whiff of the game's humor. The butler farts a lot. That's funny. It turns out that Wolfram Hall is filled with vampires. That's creepy. And I go on to fight the Count. His fight isn't too difficult and we get to witness Dan's badassness. <laughs> he just yawns at the Count's screams of anguish. Remind me to never mess with Dan. But my victory is only short-lived as I have to learn as I return to the professor's lab. He tells me that Kia went missing in Whitechapel. Oh really? What were you expecting, dude? I rush to Kia's rescue and make my way to Whitechapel myself. I have to play dress up first and steal at that guy's beard. Don't ask, just roll with it. This lady of the night tells me to find Kia at the clock tower, but I arrive moments too late. I can only witness Kia's murder by the hand of Jack the Ripper. Shook by Kia's death, I call quits on the professor and make my escape into London sewers. I run into these... mole people, maybe, and learn that they are worshipping me as a god. I'm not complaining, but it's still weird. They ask me to save their women from a nasty hentai monster and after clearing my hat, I return to the professor. I learn that he built a time machine a long time ago and promptly go on to steal the thing. I pay a little visit to the sewer people again, explaining why they are worshipping me as a god and make my way further through time to save Kia. This time around, I arrive just at the right moment to save my undead waifu. Mercy honorable knight, spare me. Uh -huh.
Damn, Daniel. That's cold. My past self shows up, we shake hands, and I transform into Super Dan. Again. What? Okay, who cares about logic? Kia is saved and we rejoice. <sighs> that leaves me with only one problem. Peelthorn is getting close to get his hands on the last spellbook page. I make my way to a cathedral and have to collect a bunch of spirits to get my hands on the last page before Palethorn does. I get the page and the whole place explodes. Because that's what cathedrals do. Oh no! It turns out that Palethorn just used me to get the last page. I kill his henchman for good and confront Palethorn and his new demon friend. The smart cookie I am, I trick the two into fighting each other and everything is fine and dandy as Kia and I celebrate my victory by taking off in the time machine. Just to be attacked by a demonic looking pale form. Wait, that's the ending? But I should get the good ending. I collected all the soul chalices. If that's the good ending, what is the bad ending then? Dan and Kia are laid to rest in Kia's tomb to spend the rest of eternity together. But that's much better. What the fuck, Sony?